Think of this scenario. You're going to a place that has a reputation for non-stop bass action. And when you get there, a severe cold front hits. What do you do? Well, this week, we talk exactly about that situation. I'm Bill Spicer. This is the new Fly Fisher. The new Fly Fisher is made possible in partnership with Algoma Country, Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada. Our destination for this episode is Algoma Country and Borden Lake, a spring-fed lake that is over 12 miles long and up to 200 feet deep. There's 78 miles of shoreline with 87 islands. We are guests of John Pegg and Chaplow Lodge, the only lodge on the lake which gives them the ability to have some environmental controls such as catch and release. This has helped the lake sustain its incredible fish population. Along with John Pegg, joining us also will be Brad Coco, a longtime resident and friend to Chaplow Lodge. Brad has fished Borden Lake extensively and is considered one of the best anglers in the area. The reports from the previous week had been good and the fishing was excellent, but this week was different. A severe cold front had gone through the area. Bass hate cold fronts. Air pressure affects fish because their buoyancy in the water is controlled by an air sac. This is very sensitive and they feel the slightest change. It's generally believed that a falling pressure at the beginning of a cold front tends to make the fish more active and they feed heavily. Then the sudden rising pressure after the cold front passes shuts them down. Like most people, I fish the usual spots, such as rocks, fallen trees, or docks, with no luck. The high pressure was shutting down the bite. What to do? The only thing left was to fish deeper and fish drop-offs. Bass will generally go deep when the pressure is high. Fish on. You got one on? Yep. Right off this ledge here, Yep. we've been searching for fish. We had a bad storm yesterday and last night, rained all night. That generally makes fishing tough the next day. We fished shallow water, we didn't think they, they weren't getting anything. We're off a shelf here. John was saying he was marking fish down a certain depth, so we decided to try it, try it here and not a bad one too. There we go. And good old Scotty's McFly. It was designed for this area here. So white marabou leech with some orange on it. Fish seem to like it. And a small one here. Not large at all, but it's the right species, what we're after. This is prime smallmouth area. Right along here where it goes shallow and then it deepens right off and it's all rocky rock pile prime smallmouth area got another fish on it's not even two minutes after we found a reef here with a deep drop off the fish are hanging out right on the edge of that. They're not up in the shallows. The storm last night pushed them off into the deep. 
And the way I knew this one hit, the water so clear I can see my fly clearly and my fly disappeared. So I set the hook and that was a fish. <laughs> and watch me bring them up too. Sometimes, Bill, you'll see that crayfish coming out of their mouth as they're fighting. Yeah, for sure, up. yeah. About the same size as the last one. Marvelous hook, let that go there. Not too big, but they'll get bigger. But I think we found the fish. We've been all over the place fishing all the normal areas they do. But like I said, last night, there was a huge storm with just an incredible amount of rain coming down all at once. And I knew that was gonna make things tough. We had to search around. We found them. They're going to transition from shallow to deep water. This is also late in the season. Uh, the, the temperature is going down and the fish are looking for warmer water. So that's what I think has happened and we're, this is where we're going to find them. In the deep water here and underwater uh, rock piles, they're not in their normal spots. They're a little deeper. Now the technique I'm using to slow down, I'm not casting far. I have my rock pile here, my deep water here. You can see easily one or the other. There's the rock pile and the dark water is deep. I'm going right over beside the rock pile, not far. Letting it sink down, sink, sink, sink. And then I'm just using the tip of my rod and dragging it like so, just ever so slightly. When they're in an off mood that they are right now, slower is better. They're not chasing anything. I, uh, faster retrieve earlier, I was getting nothing. As Soon as I stopped and did this, I started producing fish. Again, not a long cast, but an accurate one that I'm right at the, the edge of the rocks. Even if you bounce it on the rocks a bit and pop it off, the fish are generally waiting on the outside. And even when I get in front of myself here, I'll let it sink to the bottom, then pop it, pop it. And many times I've had fish right in front of the boat come up and look at the fly. Just like that. I'm doing this with the fly underneath the surface. Fish on. Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. Get out of there. Went right under the boat on me. <laughs> and he's giving me a pretty good little fight. I don't know how big he is, but. Ooh. Oh, yeah. It's a good size one. He's coughing up uh, pieces of crayfish, I think. I'm trying to manage my line here, and that's the one problem when you're trying to long cast and get as much in as you can, you step on your line. There we go. No, that's not a bad fish. Flies out. Okay, let's let this guy go. We had gone farther searching for, for bass and went over, there's an area where there's a lot of fallen trees. That's generally, usually good for bass, nothing. They've gone into deeper water. So what we've done, if you can see here, we got a, under the water there, we got a, a, like a point of all rocks and it drops off deep. And I got that last fish right on the edge of the rocks. Every fish that I've been getting has been on the edge of the rocks. So that storm, drove them deep. So that's what we got to do. There's a, a, a rule that I've been going by for a number of years now and, and, and I was an old fisherman that told me and he says if you've had a cold front come through slow down go deep and fish structure. So I've slowed down I'm just I'm just dragging it on the bottom. I'm not fast stripping it at all. I'm going deep doing from looks like about four feet down to nine feet. I'm going deep and I'm fishing the structure. The first day was tough, as I knew it was going to be. That said, we figured it out. Hopefully, tomorrow the fish will have settled down and the bite returns. 
comparing the, the different lodges, I would say that our, our cabins are middle to upper class. Uh, the three cabins we have at the, the north end here are uh, the Bear Claws, Sunrise and the Bayview. And they're, they're only about 12 years old. Uh, they have full amenities. You got a three piece bath, you got Wi Fi, you got satellite TV. Um, our big thing here is clean. We have an excellent staff that maintains these cabins to a pristine level. And uh, we go out of our way to make sure things are clean and making you feel like you're at home. Well, it's been our experience uh, uh, for bookings. Uh, it gets busy around Christmas time and into the new year. Uh, a lot of the folks get together and uh, make their plans around that time because that's when families get together and friends. So we find that uh, usually into the new year is when uh, most of our, our calls come in. Um, generally speaking, if you wait till February, March, it's getting, you know, the pickings get a little, a little smaller as to which cabin you want and what you're after for a booking. The next day, resident neighbor Brad Coco graciously offered to be our guide. Brad is a seasoned angler and has fished a lake for years. Our strategy was to start to fish shorelines with sudden drop-offs. Fish on. Just... We had noticed that there was some fish near the bottom, and I thought, well, I'm just going to put it down as far as I can to uh, see if I can lure one up, and sure enough, I did. Don't know how big it is, but they fight hard here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Fly out. Again, Scotty's McFly works tremendous for smallmouth bass. And away she goes. Now again, I've had to go deep. The three rules, go deep, go slow and fish structure. We got a boulder field on the bottom here. It's deep and I'm just dragging it along the bottom. As, we're, as the wind's pushing the, pushing the boat, I'm just ticking the bottom as much as I can. Hardly doing anything, slow it down. They're not chasing anything right now. It's uh, second day after a cold front, so uh, hopefully they start getting more active and then uh, bigger flies and more action uh, on the fly will work. But right now, slow, slow, slow. There's a lot of crayfish in this lake and I guess this is imitating what a crayfish does, up and down, up and down, along the bottom. They tell me a lot of the fish that they catch here will regurgitate crayfish. Uh, the, the lake is just full of them. So I guess that's what's happening. Well, I'm feeling for the bottom right now, and I'm just ticking up and down, stripping in a little, right, right there, stripping in a little line, hopping along the bottom, does it every time. There is a lot of fish here. Now yesterday I had a harder time because it was right after that rainstorm. Today they seem to be wanting to put the feed bag on and start feeding again. So now the setup I've got on my sinking leader is about four feet of 15 pound test. And to that, I got my fly. Nothing fancy. You don't need, they don't see the line itself. And there we go. Not very big, but I'm having a ball. Just a ball. There is bigger ones in here. I know it. I know it. Scotty's McFly. An invention of a friend of ours, Scott Curry. And if you go on our YouTube st station, uh, there's tying instructions for Scotty's McFly. Deadly smallmouth fly. Well, on Borden Lake, uh, the targeted species is, uh, is, is generally smallmouth and walleye. They're the predominant species, they're the most numerous. Um, it's hard to target pike in this lake. Uh, granted, we have a lot of pike in this lake. Uh, you will catch pike. Probably uh, one per five fish of either species you're going after. They're, 
There is not a lot of weed beds, but there is excellent structure for big pike to, to hunt and, and feed on walleye that are in this lake. We have, uh, we have vessels in two other lakes in the, in the outlying area, uh, very close to the location that we're at now. Um, one of them is a, is a lake that, has a, that holds a lot of uh, beautiful brook trout. Um, it's a spring-fed, 60-foot uh, deep lake uh, that, uh, that produces, uh, on average, a lot of our guests get three or four nice, really nice brook trout out of there on a visit. Uh, as well, we have another lake if you're more after the, uh, the pike. Uh, we have some, some trophy pike in a lake close to here, which I also have another vessel at. Um, they, uh, they produce a good-sized pike, and, and you also get walleye in that lake as well. Yeah, the, um, you know, depending if you're after walleye, pike, or, or smallmouth in this lake, um, there's, there's, a, there's a factor here. It's, it's a very diverse lake. Um, for that reason, I give you a laminated map of this, of this lake that shows you all the details and the hot spots you can target those different species. Um, there's over 80 islands in this lake, so there's no shortage of shoals, uh, ledges. Uh, a lot of times we find these, these really nice uh, uh, rock ledges where you have steep drop-offs, where you, where you have options to, to shoot that top water into that structure, into those, into those rock piles, yet you can still, you can still hit those drop-offs and go down deeper as well to target those species if, if, if the weather conditions aren't conducive. This week I was hoping that I would have some top water action, but cold fronts dictated different. I had to go deep. So what I was using was three basic flies. The first one was a standard beadhead woolly bugger. This one's uh, got like a kind of a peacock curl, kind of um, cactus chenille that was used in it. It sparkles quite a bit. That worked for me. Leeches work most any time. And speaking of leeches, I have a very large, heavily weighted, jointed leech here that worked really well. And what I liked about this was it's got uh, barbell eyes and it dips down head first quite a bit. And there's a lot of action on that. So a lot of jointed leech here, black leech. Then the fly of the ages for me for smallmouth. That is Scotty's McFly. That has produced more smallmouth for me in the last four or five years than any other fly that, that, that I have. Uh, it's a marabou fly with some orange in it, some green in it, and the, the smallmouth really like it. Fish hunt. Ooh. Yeah, about this feels about the same size as the rest. We'll see in a minute here. Boy, scrappers though, just scrappers. Whoa. He's bending that pole right over yeah. here. Yeah. Might be he might be bigger than, than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to say. Like I'm being fooled by how hard these fish are fighting and they're coming up and really not that, that large, but well, this one's not bad. Still a scrapper. Very good. Oh, he's Very good. Got some heft to him. That's not bad. That's not bad. These are uh, pretty scrappy little guys. That's not bad. That's not bad. We're, get, we're getting up there. Again, slow, slow, slow. I know I've been saying that a lot, but I can't emphasize it enough when you get this kind of weather. Uh, slow is it. We're going from shallow, and it really deepens out quickly here. It goes right down to 35 feet. And I'm trying to keep my minnow pattern, my Scotty's McFly, it's a weighted pattern, down and skipping it on the bottom, slowly bringing it back to myself. That's what's been working. The rods used on this episode were 9 foot, number 6 weight stiff action rods, along with matching reels and smooth drags. Even though the weather dictated a subsurface presentation, I did bring along with me a floating bass tapered line. 
you never know when the fish will start rising. Bass tapered lines are designed to cast large wind resistant flies. The second line I used was an intermediate sinking line. This was my primary line on this trip. Fish on. Mm. Got this rod bent right over. Yeah, not even that big. Oh, not bad. Barbless. Dark color to that one. Yes, yes. One of the very interesting features of coming to Chaplo Lodge is they have a top rate deep diving school. Our cameraman Brett Kulpitz got the opportunity to experience a dive. Listen as John Pegg talks about the school. Warden Lake is always calm. Uh, very rare you're going to get conditions that you can't go out boating on. Uh, for that reason, we run our commercial diving training facility, which is called Canadian Working Divers Institute. Uh, the school has been in operation for over, for over 24 years now. Um, we're an internationally recognized school that's uh, recognized by the International Marine Construction Association and accredited by the Diving Certification Board of Canada. It, uh, it attracts students from all around the world because of our international recognition. So it allows these students to come here and train for a uh, a 12 week period, um, which is a, a very condensed uh, course compared to a lot of the other uh, courses in the world that offer the same accreditation. So it allows these, these uh, young ladies and men to come in, take a step out of life for a 12 week period, which is a commitment but not as long as a full college year, and allows them to, to work hard. It's a very intensive course um, that will, uh, you know, it'll, it'll test you. Fish on. Whoa, good fish too. Good fish too. Fishing underwater islands or humps we call them, deadly when, especially when you get this cold snaps coming through and driving the fish into deep water. This is where you want to come. They hang right off the edges there. Thank you. Woo -hoo. Another good one. Let's put that where. It's not gonna get me. Decent fish, decent fish. Let's talk about the rig that I got right now. What I've had to do, when I got up here, I expected uh, fish to be in the shallows in the rocky around shores, so I brought a intermediate uh, uh, sinking line and a floating line. Now, because the cold front come through and it was so severe, it drove all the fish deep. So I had to jerry-rig something up. What I've got here is a type six sinking leader. And I've got it tied loop to loop to my clear intermediate line. And it's getting down with about three to four feet of 15 pound test, then my, then my fly. It's getting down 13 to 15 feet, no problem for me. I gotta cast it out and wait for it to sink though. You gotta give it time to get down. And when you get down, then you just drag it along the bottom, twitching it slowly. And uh, that's been proven very effective right now. Um, and uh, we, we're in the middle of a front right now. Once the sun comes, I'm sure the fish will shut down again. So we're trying to get as much fishing in as we can right now. During the front like this, the fish put the feed bag on. As soon as the sun comes out, they stop. Better fish. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's what we like to see.
Oh, I don't believe that. I got so lucky. <laughs> I got so lucky. This might be a pike. We'll see in a minute here. But I got so lucky. As soon as it hit, it went under the boat. Wow. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. It's staying down. It's big fish, big fish. I hope it's a bass. I hope it's a bass. Oh, now he's coming at me. Big bass, big bass. Yes, sir. <laughs> Way to go. And again, I had to slow it down. I know I've said that quite a bit, but I've had to slow it down. This, this is a good fish. <laughs> okay, isn't that some fish? It's been long, hard. But like I said, slowing down has made the big difference here. Let this baby go. Cold fronts, they make us all crazy, including yours truly. But that last fish shows you that it can be dealt with by slowing down. I'd like to thank John Pegg and Shaplo Lodge for inviting us and Brad Coco for being our guide. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines and we'll see you next week. The New Fly Fisher is made possible in partnership with Algoma Country, Destination Ontario, Orvis Fly Fishing, Trout Unlimited, Rio Products, Oscar Blues Brewery, Global Rescue, Adipose Boatworks, WeatherTech Canada. <laughs>